the uh, 18th, I guess it is, the day after St. Patrick's Day. So you might be surprised to discover we're still using green and gold, but it's okay because it was, uh, I love this color scheme. So let's be sure we're transmittalating. It looks like we are. Alrighty, good. We're good to go. All right, let me see. I'm going to get a little more card and a little less desk in the view. How about that? All right, so I, f I saw a fun fold, uh, actually kind of a a technique for figuring out how to add a fun fold, a pop-up element to any card over on Connie Stewart's YouTube. Um, she's Simply Simple Stamping, and um, she has a very good tutorial. So I'm going to show you how to make one of them, and we're going to talk a little bit about figuring the math. Hey, Glenda. Hi, Rosie. Um, figuring the math so that you could add a pop-up card to really any card that you have made. So this one is an Easter card and uses the pretty Gift of Hope and a little bit of Forever Fern. So Gift of Hope is from the mini catalog and Forever Fern is from the current annual catalog, which I hope also will be in the new annual catalog. Just saying. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Stacy. So here's the card. Very simple on the front. Um, and then you open it and it has a pop-up element just like that. All right. Something. What is that? I don't know what that is. I'll get my eraser in a minute. But uh, it's just a pop-up, very simple pop-up to make, and I'm going to show you how to use it. I've used the Forever Greenery DSP, and then I've done a little bit of heat embossing on um, the sentiments. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Oh, I just also, just so you know, this panel right here, this little circle, which is a stitch shape circle, is embossed with one of the two Meadow Moments embossing folders. Now these are minis, which means they work in the mini cutter, and you get two of them. You get this one that has flowers and butterflies all over, and then you have this one that has a leaves, uh, like a border, that you could stamp, you could emboss a border. So it's very pretty. I like it a lot. All right, let's put it aside. I've got everything cut, um, and this will be uh, on my blog tomorrow, so you don't even need to worry about taking measurements and taking notes. Now, fair warning, the pollen is going crazy here, so my throat is tickling after about seven words spoken, so I may have to stop frequently to get a drink, or we're going to have a bit of a coughing fit. All right, so let's get what I've got going. Basically, my color scheme is just jade, shaded spruce, and white and gold. <clears throat> Speaking of, let me get that drink, because you know, once a coughing fit starts, it doesn't end. At least not without some really really ugly coughing. Okay, so I have just now realized that I've only cut, oh wait, actually I only need one of these. Uh -huh. Duh. Okay, so my card front is just a piece of simple basic white that I have um, uh, matted on shaded spruce. So we'll go ahead and make the card front first and get it ready to go and then make the fun pop-up portion. All right, so there we go. Now, I've got two pieces of Forever Greenery. It's actually the back-to-back -back pieces. And I'm going to mat them on... Um, I should do this one like this. We're going to mat them on Shaded Spruce as well. A little bit of liquid glue. Hi, Amy. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Karen. Shelly. Appreciate y'all joining. And hopefully you'll enjoy this card. I always think it's fun if there's something unexpected on the inside of a card, and that one, this one certainly is. There's nothing on the outside that makes you think, oh, this is a fun fold. All right, and then we'll adhere this piece as well, except my glue does not wish to come out. It's like a kid that doesn't want to go to school. No, don't make me adhere anything today. It's national, no. What day is this? Oh, yes, Thursday. Good Ness. Um, I even said Thursday at the beginning too and then all of a sudden right then I was thinking man I said Thursday at the start of this and it's not Thursday. I don't even know what day it is but it's totally Thursday. Okay so now I'm just going to adhere these to the card front as straightly as I can <clears throat> which may or may not be all that straight. <laughs> and do notice that these both do have up downs I mean, I think they do. You could certainly put them down up, but I think they have up downs. <clears throat> okay, and then we'll just layer that. 
<coughs> Excuse me, guys. My goodness. It rained like crazy, so I kind of thought that the pollen, you know, had maybe settled down. But I, I thunked wrong. Okay, now I'm going to take that little circle. And what I, all I did with this was um, cut it out. It's the, <clears throat> just so you know, it's the next to smallest of the stitched shapes circles. So I cut it out from Just Jade and then embossed it in that uh, Meadow Moments embossing folder. And I'm just gonna use a little liquid glue to adhere it to the card front. Right about there looks good to me. Okay. Y'all have probably figured out this is potentially my favorite embellishment on the entire planet. I love these <laughs> hoops. I just love them. So I'm going to take a couple of glue dots and use the glue dots to adhere the gold hoop, she says, as the glue dot finically refuses to get off of the tweezers. We'll use a couple of glue dots to adhere this to our card front. And you wanna use at least two, okay, because otherwise it tends to rotate, but with two, that kind of holds it in place. So we're just going to stick it right about there. That looks good. That looks good. Okay, now this can set aside for just a second. Do the hoopla hoop. I know. I love it. Hey, Diane, I appreciate you joining. That's great. Yes, we all have ups and downs. This is a true statement. Now, I've taken the next to largest stitch shape and cut a piece of basic white. And what I'm going to do is I am going to heat emboss one of the sentiments from the um, Gift of Hope set, and I'm going to heat emboss it in gold. So let me set this aside and get my gold out. Okay. And I still use my embossing buddy, so hopefully y'all have one. If you don't, I'm pretty certain you can get it at Michael's. And we'll just emboss this right in the center. The nice thing about embossing a circle is it doesn't really matter if it's straight because you can always, you know, straighten it by just how you put it on. So we're just going to hold it a beat. Put our lid back on. Hi, honeybee. Appreciate you joining. And then we'll sprinkle it with some of this gold embossing powder. And give it a couple of flicks and a couple of puffs. And then I'm going to take my this is one of those high-end, very, very expensive, very, very expensive brushes that I think I got at the grocery store just to brush off some of that, the extra that I couldn't flick off or blow off. And now I'm going to heat emboss this. Now, seriously, heat embossing has to be one of the coolest of the chemical reactions that we play with as stampers, right? <clears throat> And you don't need to wiggle it all over, just kind of hold it in place. If you were trying to emboss vellum, you might want to move it just to kind of uh, minimize the amount of curling you get. There you go. And you just hold it on there until all of it stops being dull and gets shiny. Once it's all shiny, that's how you know that it is heat embossed. Now, tip, very important tip, Hey, Diane. Hi, Lenny. Appreciate you joining. Until this cools, you can actually smear your embossing. So I would highly recommend that you, um, you know, not. Second tip, although I am not real great at instantly cleaning my stamp sets after I have inked with them, because, you know, I'm kind of a messy stamper. Don't know if you've figured that out yet. With Versamark, I do try to wipe it off as quickly as I can, because it can get kind of sticky gunky. Okay. If all else fails, take it to your kitchen sink and roll it under a little bit of warm water. Okay. That should be good. And now I'm going to use some mini Stampin' Dimensionals. Obviously, hi Patricia. Obviously, you can use whatever size you've got. This is the, I had some of these and so I'm just trying to use them up. So I'm going to, this little guy is going to be right about there. So I'm just going to put Stampin' Dimensionals all around there to catch my sentiment like that and pull off the covers and stick them on and the card front will be done will be done ske 
all done but the inside. The inside still has been not done. Okay. Alrighty. And so now we'll make sure that it's straight now. I'm going to put it over there like about there. There we go. Good. And give it a little stick to the dimensionals. And if you feel like you're not quite supported, grab another dimensional and stick it under there. Easy peasy. All right. Remember, guys, it's paper. Make it do what you want. Rule the paper. All right. So there's our card front. I'm going to set it aside now. All right. Let's talk pop-up element. <clears throat> you can use whatever you want. I'm going to use some of this Forever Fern DSP. And what I did is I want the DSP to sit on the bottom of my card base, of the back of the card base, in the same proportions that I would if this was a mat on just a regular card, okay? So that means with four and a quarter inch by five and a half, I want the piece that's on the back, you following me, to be four and one eighth wide by five and three eighths long. Okay, so if you double five and three eighths, you come up with ten and three quarters. Okay, so that means that this piece here, which is going to be our pop up in about two seconds, is four and an eighth by ten and three quarters, and I'm going to score and fold it at five and three eighths. Everybody following me? Yep. I hope so. So just do it. It's a little bit of simple math, and it, it will help you answer the question that your kids have. I don't even know why I need to learn this. I'll never use math again. And you can say, well, help me figure out this card then. Okay, so with that, I will first score and fold at five and three eighths. One, two, three. Make sure you use the scoring version. And let's see, I'm going to fold it um, like this. Okay, so the part you're gonna see in the card folds in. Copy, okay. So now comes some more math. The part of the pop-up that is static, which means always the same, is this piece right here, which is one inch long. You, you want this pop-up piece to be one inch deep and one inch tall. That gives you plenty of room to hold whatever it is that you're popping up. What changes is how far you go in from each edge to create the pop-up, okay? So if I had a very, like for example, if I was using this small little circle right here, Oh, look, what a coincidence. I happen to have one made. I would say, okay, it's going to be right there. I know my pop-up needs to be in here, right? So I would just place my the piece that's popping up in the middle, and I'd say, okay, if I went in an inch and a quarter from the, each end, then my pop-up would go from here to there, and that would be plenty, okay? So that's how you figure out what, how big and where you want to put your, your scores. Did that, did that get, like, hard? If that got hard, I'm sorry. What I'm going to do, because this is my pop-up, this is what I'm going to pop up. I'm going to put a sentiment here. This is the pretty wreath from Gift of Hope, and I have cut it with the largest of the stitched shapes, or stitched so sweetly, rectangle dies. Okay, so it's big. It's almost as big as the inside of the card. So what I did is I placed this on here, and I said, well, I'll just come in three quarters of an inch from this side and three quarters of an inch from this side, and make my one inch deep pop up and be ready to go. So three quarters of an inch is the measurement for this particular card. Let me show you how to make it. Put both of your blades up at the top. Put your first side in, you've got it folded, okay? Put your first side in your trimmer at the three quarter inch mark, which is right there. And then you're going to bring your score, your cutting tool down to the one inch tick mark that's on this ruler. OK, 
Okay, so just bring it down, cutting down to one inch, just like that, okay? Then turn it over and put the other side at the three quarters of an inch mark and repeat. Do not rinse, just repeat. Bring it down. You can see I'm going right to that one inch tick mark right there, which you may or may not be able to see. I'm gonna go with you can't, but trust me, it's the one inch mark, okay? Then, it, to avoid a catastrophe, I'm going to move my cutting blade completely out of the way. So you can see what I have here is I have two one inch cut lines, three quarters of an inch in from either side of my folded piece of DSP. Now what I want to do is score between the two cuts, okay? So if I, I know that that's an inch from here to here, so if I place the folded edge in at the one inch line, one inch mark on my trimmer, then I can bring my score tool down to the three quarter inch mark and score to three to the, the cut line that's on the other side, okay? So let me just do that, like so. And then I turn it over and repeat. Again, no rinsing, just repeating. You know, come on, man. It's rinse and repeat from the back of the conditioner bottle. It's a joke. It's a joke. There you go. And you're bringing it down to the cut line. All right. So now I have scored both sides at one inch, and I'm just going to go ahead and lay it over like that and use my bone folder to give it a good rub and bring it around here. Do it both ways. So basically what I'm doing is I'm just giving that a real nice burnish. Okay, now this piece needs to be on the inside, right? Needs to be on the inside. So just open it up and push it in like that. And you can give that a little burnish if you need to. And there is your pop-up element. Okay, easy peasy, done. Now, I have my card base, which is a piece of Just Jade, and I'm gonna go ahead and fold it. And what I'm gonna do, this is, this is very important. <laughs> Make sure that when you adhere this in, you don't adhere it like this. You have to have the pop-up piece on the inside, like so, otherwise, Guess how much it's gonna pop? Yes, the answer you're looking for is um, never, okay? So first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some liquid glue. There's two reasons for this. First of all, I love liquid glue. And second, it's gonna give me a chance to move it around a little bit if I get it un undone, okay? So we're gonna just make sure it's adhered straightly, it's cut straightly, folded straightly, all those straightlies, every straightly there is. I now have glue on my fingers, because I'm a pigger. Get a little more glue going here. Okay. And then just lay it in place. Get it as close to lined up, uh, the back portion lined up on the bottom of the card base as you can. Okay. And then just lay this down, hold it down. Lay it down in place. Give it a light burnish to hold it and then open it right away. And if you need, if it's not quite straight like you like, then, you know, fix it. It's card stock and paper. Make it do what you want it to do. Okay, then we repeat. Again, making sure the, the pop-up element goes inside. Put a little more liquid glue. <clears throat> You could also use cardstock for this. You don't need to use DSP, but why wouldn't you if you've got beautiful DSP? And then we're just going to close that down, give it one good rub, and then pick it up and make sure that it is straight as you want it. If it's not, play with it a little bit, move it around. There you go. And so there is the pop-up element 
in the card. Done. Okay, now let's go ahead and get our pop-up ready to go. So again, I heat embossed this in gold and it's had plenty of time to rest and get warm, not warm, cool. So I'm gonna first take my other sentiment, which is he is not here for he is risen, which I love. And I love it for an Easter card, okay? Let's go ahead and I am going to stamp that in shaded spruce. And I'm gonna just do like I tell you to do, which is make sure that I have a straight image. And I'm gonna show you another really important reason to always do that, okay? So you'll see it in just a second. And then I'm just going to stamp it right in the center of the wreath like that. Hold it a beat, don't rock, do not rock. Don't rock the boat, baby, rock the boat, don't rock the boat. Okay, that's plenty. I'll be quiet now. <laughs> Okay, thank you, honeybee. I'm glad that that helped. Okay, now we're gonna let this dry, and while it's drying, I'm going to use my Stampin' Right markers to color the leaves. Listen to this carefully in case you don't already know it, and even if you do already know it, to remember. Do not try to use your Stampin' Blends on embossed images, okay? Unless they're very, very large, and you can really stay away from the embossed lines because the alcohol markers will, in fact, melt the embossing. Just saying. And you probably know how I first learned that was by making a horrible, horrible mess on a card I was trying to make. So, use your Stampin' Right markers. I've got my Just Jade and my Shaded Spruce. And I am only coloring the leaves. I'm going to leave my... Um, flowers white. White seems right to me for this card. And what I'm doing is I'm just coloring all of the leaves with the Just Jade. And then I'm going to come back and on parts, some of the leaves, I'm going to add the tiniest bit of Shaded Spruce. So it won't be as beautifully blended as it would be with blends. But first off, these are tiny, tiny images, right? So what kind of shading could you really do? Unless you're one of those miniature artist people, you probably can't do much shading. Anyway, so do not stress over not shading on this. We're gonna add a little bit of shaded spruce in just a second and we'll be good to go. All right, here we go. We had kind of a busy night. We thought, although it turned out to be that the weather forecasters for us <clears throat> were scarier than the actual weather turned out, but in case you don't know me yet, I am a wuss when it comes to spring weather and tornadoes in particular terrify me, which I think is reasonable. It's okay to be terrified of tornadoes. So I was worried about it, but they weren't even gonna come until this morning when I was gonna be up. So I decided to shift my concern to, what if we lose power and I can't get on the treadmill? Which is a weird thing for me to worry about. Okay, now I'm going to take that Shaded Spruce Stampin' Right marker and just do a couple of little additions in a few areas, okay? Not all of them, just a few. Just to give a little bit of a, hey, there's some other color besides just Jade on there. Okay. And I'm having to hold my mouth just right and really look at what I'm doing. So if you're saying things like, I can't believe you're afraid of tornadoes, I can't see it. I'm not looking can't make me. Okay, there you go. I did not know that embossing color. Yes, there you go. Karen, you learned something. Thank goodness. I love it when I can teach a little something something. Okay, anybody see any leaves that I have not colored? No, I've got them all. All right, now this is the next place where you can kind of make a mistake. For example, if you were to inadvertently glue it in upside down, that wouldn't be good. So Hold it in place and say, oh yes, it's this direction. And then just center it. Now, this happens to be almost as wide as the actual piece is. So it's really pretty easy to center, right? So you're gonna center it like that. And you're gonna put your liquid glue on the front face only of the pop-up element, okay? Like this. Just like that. Make sure it's still centered. 
and then just lay the front of the card down like that. Thank you, Rosie. And then, bing, bada bang, bada boom, chakalaka. There you got a pop up. <laughs> I love it. Okay, now I'm going to add another little panel because you really can't write on there. So I thought what I would do is add a second sentiment and I'm going to do the first portion of this sentiment in shaded spruce and it's the one that says wishing you the blessings of and I'm just putting it on a smaller piece of basic white like that and now I'm going to show you a I'm, I'm a little embarrassed by this okay but first I got to get a drink because I feel a coughing fit coming on here it comes I'm a little embarrassed by this this is why you should always stamp your scrap paper first so that you can be sure that you have a nice straight image. All right. Okay, there we go. See the problem? Anybody? Anyone? Give me a thumbs up if you see the problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I put the sticker on upside down. And these stickers are really good at sticking to the stamps. And so you can't really, you know, fix that. So it's really important that you stamp once to be sure that everything is good. Because what I have to do is actually stamp, yes, oops, is correct. Have to stamp upside down like that. Which is a little bit disconcerting, but it's doable. Okay, so I am going to do the Easter in Just Jade. The upside down and yet completely right side up Easter in Just Jade. Like that. While I have the Just Jade out, I'm going to use one of the pretty little leaves from, um, oh gosh, Forever Fern. And I'm going to stamp it on the bottom. I'm going to stamp once. And then I'm going to turn and stamp again. Okay. While I'm got, while I have that all out, why don't I do my envelope the same way? Just stamp. I love these these leaves. I love how they've made the shading. So all you have to do is stamp, and you have instantaneous. If you heat the stamp in the microwave, you might be able to take off the label. Oh boy. Mm. I don't know about that. Maybe really gently heat it. While I'm here, why don't I just put this on right now? Right now. Then when we get it all, all the card put together will be done ski. And you guys can go back about your business instead of wasting your entire day with me yakking. All right, so I've just got another little piece of the forever greenery. DSP. And we'll trim it off and our envelope will be done. And then we're going to put the rest of our card together and that will be that. That, as they will say in the industry, will be that. Okay. And we'll adhere this to a shaded spruce. You're only going to use it once a year or so. That's right. Which is even, even a bigger reason to stamp it once first because... It's, it's actually kind of hard to see when you just look at it that it's upside down. I was really shocked the first time I stamped it. I was like, what the heck? Why is that upside down? I can't believe I did that. My theory is, folks, there's them who have and them who will. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Okay, so now I'm going to take my card, and I'm just going to adhere this on the on the bottom panel. Whoop, whoop. Do you see that jump right out of my hand like that? Goodness. Okay. And you could make this any size you wanted, right? You don't have to make it my proportions. But I kind of liked how that turned out. 
Now, my card front, instead of popping it on with dimensionals, because there's plenty of thickness already on this whole card, and even the card front itself has <clears throat> some dimensional layers, right? With the hoop and the sentiment. So I'm just gonna use liquid glue and adhere it directly to the card front, like so. Look at that, just jade and shaded spruce. What a color combo. One of my favorites. One of my favorites. All right, folks, there you go. There you go. There you go. And then, look, perfectly normal card. Who would expect a pop-up? Oh, my goodness. It's like magic. It's magical. It's just magical like that. All right, y'all. I appreciate you spending part of your Thursday with you, with me. I hope you have a great rest of the week. And I hope I'll see you on Saturday for my Facebook Live at 7 p.m. Eastern. All right. Thanks so much. See you guys. Bye.